Greetings, students. This is your wonderful, friendly professor. Uh, wanting to spend some time today talking about assessment in, in systems theory. So again, as always, we encourage you to continue to do your readings before you come to class um, and follow along with the video as this might have some information that will be helpful to you in your quest to become the best social workers that you can be. All right, moving the slide forward. It's like I'm working here. Oh, there it is. All right, so as we think about uh, things as it relates to last week's class, uh, we talked about some essays um, and those were coming in. Uh, so we'll talk some more later in this class about things that may have come up for you as you kind of follow through on those essays. So we'll get back to that. So again, as we have talked about for the last couple of weeks, the issue around systems theory and really understanding uh, the micro, meso, and macro levels of systems. Uh, as you know, you're in the process now working on your Frozen River video uh, integration assignment that really looks at all of these particular aspects of how systems function and, and with the questions that go along with that as well as also recognizing um, the human behavior seen through these complex systems. So some of the things that you guys are doing in your human behavior and social environment class uh, will tie in nicely to what we're doing here. So assessment, what is an assessment? Um, how are you using systems theory when you're doing your assessment? And then are we looking at assessing through all of these particular areas, micro, meso, as well as looking at the issue of diversity as well. We need to know what's going on with families or in the individuals. And we also need to look at what's happening in their community, in their places of employment, as well as different institutions. So the assessment is broad, as you can see, it covers a large area. And for us to be good and competent social workers, we need to really pay attention to assessing and gathering information from all of these areas as it relates to the work that we're doing with our families. Um, we also look at other issues, you know, as you can see here in this particular poster, we got a situation where um, there are protesters for the Black Lives Matter. So when you start to think about um, some of those particular issues that are current in our society, in our country today, uh, with issues around how people are treated, police brutality, racism, things of that particular nature, we still use the same methods of assessment when we're looking at how do we assess communities as well. What's going on with them individually, uh, what's happening in communities, what's happening in employment. What large scale social policies affect folks as well. Uh, we start to look at things like income. We look at uh, the poverty guidelines for 2016. So looking at where people are actually living and how much money they're making, all of this creates um, an important source of information that may inform how you may then work with that particular family system. There is a difference between a diagnosis and an assessment. As you can see, the cartoon here um, is making poking fun at this whole notion. But basically, what's the difference? A diagnosis is based on a medical model. Um, in our next class, uh, social work. 3383, working with individuals and families, we'll spend some time looking at the DSM-5, which is a diagnostics uh, manual that helps social workers as well as other mental health professionals make a determination um, about how to diagnose uh, what might be happening for our clients. Uh, it focuses on pathology. Um, it also looks at what's wrong with the patient. Um, it's very, very micro-focused. So when you're doing a diagnostic with a psychologist or with a psychiatrist, um, they're really looking at focusing only pretty much on the micro areas in terms of looking at what are some of the primary sources of this problem and what we're going to do as a target for intervention. Um, so the diagnosis focuses on the social workers on clients. Social workers identify problems, design, you know, design micro focused interventions as well as focused on client change. So, four major differences. We look at assessments in terms of meso-macro 
along with my growth. So what are the things that are in your environment? So if, for example, you're working with a client and they are presenting with issues of significant depression, then I think the depression piece is legitimate in and of itself. But when we start to look at things like environmental surroundings, there might be reasonable justifications for why things are the way they are. There could have been a recent death in a family, um, a person's home could have been burglarized or they could have lost all of their belongings. They may have just lost their job. But when we start to look at those things that are happening in the environment, it also informs us in terms of looking beyond just that particular person. Uh, we also can look outside of those systems that can be targets of change, outside for those systems that can be targets of change, as well as we are working with the clients and not on the clients. There's a big difference in terms of that. So again, our model is around empowerment and really moving forward in terms of helping people take a look at those issues, particular issues. And then also assessments are strength-based, they're not pathological. Um, we have talked in some previous classes about all families bringing some strength to the table. And it's our job as practitioners and as social workers to really understand what those particular strengths are. Uh, they may be harder to find in some families than others, but they are all there. And we need to base our assessment on what's working in those families as opposed to not what's not working. When we look at assessments, we're looking at different categories. So we're looking at friends, families, education, problem solving, personal qualities, characteristics, temperament. Uh, we're looking at physical and financial resources. We're looking at attitudes, perspectives. We're looking at all of these things when we're looking at assessments. We're assessing social supports. Who are people connected to? Are they connected to anyone? Are they isolated? Do they have friends, families, coworkers, other people who can be a part of their lives that can assist them in terms of what they do? And so you're basically wanting to know who people call when they're in distress. Who do they call when they need help? Who do they live with? Who do they see on a daily basis? You're also looking for allies, someone who can help you help the client in terms of looking at how to resolve some of the struggles that they might be experiencing. Um, you're also looking at the lack of social supports. You know, if you have just moved here, let's say from Louisiana because of storm damage um, and you have very limited contacts or know very few people here in the area, you don't know about the culture, you don't know about the bus systems, all of those are social systems or social support systems that are not there. So these are important for us to understand as we are understanding our work with our clients, um, as well as we also need to uh, look at and have them talk to us about what kind of social supports they have and what kind of social supports they think that they will actually need. We're also looking at education. Why does it matter? Financial status can be a huge indicator of issues and access to services. So again, looking at the holistic viewpoint in terms of these things. So when we look at the issues that are listed here, those play a role in terms of, you know, clients' ability to be successful from a financial standpoint, as well as educational levels uh, can be an indicator as well about how things can proceed. So you always wanna assess for those things when you're working with your families, as well as employment history. Do people have the ability to, or have the skill sets to actually maintain and, and support themselves as well as a family? So paying attention to all of these things are huge. And we also have to keep it strength-based. Problem solving skills, decision-making. How do folks problem solve? How do they actually work their way through different situations? Um, so these are some things that you can ask in terms of challenges that you've had in your life and what you've done to overcome them. Um, looking at what has worked in the past. Um, those are very important things to help us get a sense of what people's problem solving capacity and decision making actually is. Um, always be aware that things that seems like negatives can often be turned around into positives if we really are paying attention to what folks are doing. Um, so this example is, is, a, is a clear example of, you know, a person who's got a criminal history, but has also had some good time in terms of not being connected to law enforcement. So looking at the successes where we can find them. Personal qualities and characteristics, um, adjustment abilities, coping mechanisms. Do people have the ability to deal with stressful situations that come up in their lives? Um, what are their personalities like? Are they funny? Are they withdrawn? Are they moody? Do they play nice with others? Are they angry? Um, grooming, self-care. 
what people looks like actually matters. Um, it can give us a lot of information about what may or may not be happening for clients based on whether they are, their grooming, for example, is in place. Um, the lack of grooming could mean a number of different things. It could be a prelude to help us understand that there might be mental health pieces that might be happening for folk. It might just be the basic economic pieces are not there and I just don't have the funds or the ability or I'm homeless and I can't be on top of self-care as well as grooming. Financial management, how do folks manage their money? All of these are personal qualities and characteristics that we really need to pay attention to. Who do they trust or do they trust anyone? Medical status, important to us to know. Um, it's a part of who it is we are as we're functioning human beings, as well as the financial resources as well. Do you have insurance? Are you financially strained? Can you go to the doctor? When's the last time you've been to the doctor? All of these are very important things for us to know what we're assessing across system. Um, medication, our folks on medication, what kind of medical issues are affecting their ability to work. Those are things that we need to know as social workers. Physical environment, you know, if, are they living in a home? Is it unclean? Is it lack of furniture? Is it, you know, does it have the basic indicators of food? Is there criminal activity in the area? All of these are things that we need to understand and know uh, as we look at that. And keeping in mind, we're strength-based. We're always looking at it from what's working as opposed to what's not working. So we need to be able to focus on all of those things, you know, what they are able to do as well as what they're not able to do. Attitudes and perspectives. Um, you know, throughout the assessment process, take note of the tone of their story. You know, how are they explaining it to you? Do they see themselves as victims every day? Um, do they see themselves as having control or being socially re solely responsible for everything in their situation? That speaks to the level of stress that people might be living with and, uh, and operating under. Do they have an optimistic or pessimistic view? These are all things that are very important for us to understand about our assessment as we move forward. Do they have religious affiliation? Do they believe in a higher power? Uh, these are all aspects of the assessment that we need to be paying attention to as we work across systems as well. You know, what is their belief system if they don't have a higher power? What do they value? What's basic? You know, what's their basic belief about right and wrong? These are all things that we as social workers need to really start to pay attention to as we're doing those assessments on the families that we're working with. Um, and the goal should always be to empower them to give them a sense of value so they can participate in their own intervention. Not us just doing it for them, but them doing it themselves. Uh, looking at also miscellaneous strengths, any other things that we may have missed, other things that people feel like that they have a fairly good handle on in the course of the life and the work that they actually do. So those are things that we need to always look at and value them and help them, help us use those to empower our clients. All right? We identify all of these particular things. We identify the concerns and the risks, and the mitigating factors. The mitigating factors are the things that folks can actually utilize to actually offset some of their risks and concerns. Um, the overall safety uh, for treatment planning, are those are all things that we will take a look at in terms of this as well. Um, we will not do this whole group assessment thing activity, but we will uh, have some other conversations when we're in class. So again, I would implore you to continue to do your readings um, to make sure that you come to class prepared so that we can have a very good critically based conversation about some of the things that you have talked about or you've talked about and learned in this particular uh, series. So thank you for your time and attention and I will see you in class.